If you're anything like me, you've been watching the news lately and feeling completely, completely overwhelmed. I, I know myself personally, I've just been really, really depressed looking at everything that's happening, happening with mass shootings and racism and the war in Ukraine and, and the environment and it's, it's almost too much to handle. Um, so in this conversation, I brought in someone who I think will add an important perspective to all of this. Her name is Patty Montella, and she's the author of Becoming Unshakable. She's also a senior teacher at The Art of Living, which offers meditation and pranayama and yoga courses around the world. Um, and she's also been working in Uvalde, Texas, bringing meditation and other practices to first care responders, doctors, nurses, and anyone in the community that needs a way to decompress, to get grounded, and to reclaim their center. Before we dive into that conversation with Patty, a few things to have on your radar that I will put in the show notes so you have easy access. Um, first, if you could like, subscribe, and share so you can get more videos like this one in your inbox. Same is true if you're listening to the audio version. Um, for the podcast. Um, Patty, as I mentioned, works for The Art of Living, and they're hosting a, a big event in um, San Jose, California, called I Stand for Peace. They do events all over the world, but this particular one is going to be in just as a response to all of the violence in our world right now. So if you're available in anywhere near San Jose, California on June 9th, 2022, I will put links to where you can get tickets to that. I'll also put links to The Art of Living um, so you can find their other courses as well as Patty's website so you can learn more about her book and the other work she is doing. Finally, I have a free video meditation course at my website and I'll put a link to that in the notes as well and you can reach out to me in the link below okay all of that out of the way let's dive into our conversation with patty montella i want to dive into some of your work um, and hear a little bit about what you've been up to especially in recent weeks but before we get to just the awful things happening in the world right now I'm wondering if you could just tell everybody a little bit about who you are, about your book, about um, the art of living, about just every, just your general thumbnail of who you are as a teacher and speaker and writer. Oh, thank you, Darren. I'm really honored to be here too. Well, everything, the answer to everything you just asked is what brings us here today. In my previous life, I was a corporate executive for American Airlines and the Sabre Corporation and living a jet set, glamorous life, putting people in airplane seats when it was a little bit more fun to travel back then. And I just started feeling like this wasn't my calling in life, that there was something bigger, something more to know. And I started experimenting, exploring different spiritual paths, like a lot of us, right? I was a seeker. I am a seeker. And I made this move to leave Dallas, Texas, where I was living at the time, and go to Denver, Colorado. And that was the first step in leaving the corporate world. But where it was leading, I wasn't sure. I was really thinking I was going to start a company, and I was going to make loads of money, and the complete opposite is what happened. One of my clients told me about a breathing course, which she'd actually never taken. And the flyer had been falling off her desk all day. And she said, I think it's for you. And I had actually been getting this message for about two years that uh, the migraine headaches I was suffering with were stress related and that I wasn't breathing enough. So I signed up. I took the course and that was it. I, my life changed that very first session. And I, like what we're holding now, a lot of us, I had a lot of grief from a friend who had died during the AIDS epidemic and back in the 90s in Texas. I'd lost a lot of friends. And there was also the death of my marriage. And then I'd made this big move. And 
After one breathing session through the Art of Living Foundation, that grief was lifting and I was feeling hope again, which I didn't even realize had been so squashed down for so long. I felt lighter. I felt happier. I felt hopeful. And that hole in my heart was filled again, but this time with love. So I met Sri Sri Ravi Shankar a year later. And the very day we met, when I wanted to ask him, because he's an enlightened, wise soul, should I start a company? Before I could ask, he said, you'll be a full-time art of living teacher. I had no idea what that meant. And I found myself saying yes. And in my book, uh, which is called Becoming Unshakable, Wisdom Learned on the Journey to Inner Freedom, through these years under Sri Sri's um, loving, direct guidance, I'm well on my way and I share 15 wisdom lessons to help others find their way as well. Because as you know, Darren, on the spiritual path, it's, it's this, it's up and down and there's highs and lows. And if you are not rooted in the knowledge and if you are not practicing, it becomes even harder for you to navigate life. But the beauty of this particular spiritual path is that we have every one of the limbs of yoga in this organization. And so, and a lot of good people, and I've been able to navigate my way now through many an experience. And I feel really blessed to be able to share that with other people. Um, I have a, a question about your book and, and I, and I know the answer, but, but listeners may not, and they may not, feel like just you know, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> um, the title Becoming Unshakable, I think some people might be feeling very shaken right now by to the core, right? politics, by gun violence, by the environment collapsing, by a pandemic. <laughs> like the list is too long to get to everything. And right. um, I think some people, I, I think there's this, what in my view is a a mis, misnomer about spirituality that once you're spiritual, you're never shaken, you're never vulnerable, you're never upset, you never mm. grieve, you <laughs> never have heartbreak. And I don't think that's what you're saying, but what does it mean to you to become unshakable? Because I think a lot of people are feeling like shaken by kids gunned down in a classroom and, and how could they not? So I'm wondering if you could dive into that a little bit to sort of frame our conversation. I think it, I think you do it beautifully. That is such a good question and so timely. And I have um, an answer based on the last few days that last week I've been in Uvalde where the sh shooting took place. And unfortunately, it's not my first shooting. I was in Denver when Columbine happened and I was in Aurora and so on and so forth and disasters around the world. So to be unshakable to me is that, okay, we're in the world. These events are coming and going to the extreme of a school shooting of elementary school children. It could also be losing a job, the pandemic, a disagreement in the family. There's all different levels of things that can push our buttons and take us off our center. And when you become unshakable, what that means is, yeah, you've got compassion. You are, a, we're all human beings having this experience of life together. And however, if you're in your center and you're able to see things as, as though you're the witness and you're watching what's happening and you're able to you have techniques and knowledge that keep your mind and emotions in check. Does it, I mean, we're made up of emotions. So it doesn't mean you're not going to feel them, but you're not going to get lost in it. So this weekend, a perfect example is I had a big job to do, as did the teachers and volunteers who were with me, to relieve people of the stress, the trauma, to help them to sleep at night, beginning with the nurses, who were on the scene taking care of the children, the first responders, family members. That's a small community. Everybody knows everybody and everybody was impacted. 
Now, if I'm an emotional mess and lost in the emotion by what's happening, how can I do my job? How can I lift someone else up? I wouldn't have, my intellect would be clouded with emotion. I wouldn't have the inner strength and resilience to rise above to lift someone else up. I will tell you, Darren, every night I was in front of every single wreath at the uh, memorial in the plaza at the park saying each child's name, each teacher's name, and standing there and praying for them. And it really got to me a few times, you know, what I was in the middle of because the the mourning, the grief, the confusion, the anger, all of it is swirling at that little plaza in downtown Uvalde. But I began to feel the tears come at a couple of the wreaths I was in front of and with all the people crying around. And then I go and have my moment of letting it go. But that inner resilience comes back again and again in order to be able to put two feet in front of, you know, two feet going forward in life rather than not being able to uh, move forward because of what's happened in an event in the world, if, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, so many questions, um, but I also have a reflection on something I've experienced in my own life, that when I'm feeling depressed by current events, it's usually because I'm not taking action. Uh, you know, mm. I'm, the goal is not to solve every problem, to ease all suffering, to right every injustice. It's just to do something, just something, just to yeah. show up and do something, anything. Right. And um, I, I remember reading this article about right after 9-11, this woman who saw the firefighters trying to rescue people and she wanted to do something and she just bought dry socks for them. And how exactly. much they appreciated it. And I thought it was a simple little thing, a simple little gesture that made a difference. Um, and but I think when we do those things, we feel less depressed. And you are a unique soul because where many of us want to, you know, turn our head and shut our eyes, you go down and witness that pain and suffering, and hold space for the doctors and nurses and others who are really in the middle of it. And I'm wondering if that is part of your personal transformation, Uh, like to be able to go do that is scary. And yet it seems to have made you more open. And I I, like, I don't know, you seem just- I think I know where you're going. Open (laughs) in spite of witnessing that level of pain and suffering up close. Yeah, I go and dive in. Um, and not that there weren't butterflies in my stomach that day when I was driving from Austin to Uvalde, because there were. I didn't know what I was walking into. And um, But, you know, if we want to have peace in the world, it has to begin with us. And so breathing techniques, like what we teach at The Art of Living, meditation, and the ancient Vedic wisdom as a way of life, keeps the prana, as you know, the life energy high, keeps the awareness up, keeps your nervous system stable. And and every day I have to do the practice of techniques. But as a norm, that personal capacity is, is expanded in me because of these techniques and this wisdom. Now, how do most people go through life? Not doing that, right? Being so engaged in the world and getting upset about this or upset about that. The anxiety is almost at epidemic levels in our country. Loneliness is almost at epidemic levels in our country. It might be there by now. And that means as a norm, people's nervous system is already tight. So when a event happens, it could be a life event in you know, someone in your family seriously ill. It could be a global event like what we're seeing here with all the violence in America. But if that wire is already tight, the minute there's one more thing, bing, it's going to go and you're going to feel like 
you either want to get angry or you want to pull back. However, if you are always doing things as a norm to keep your nervous system fine and smooth and light, then you're going to have that capacity when these things happen. You're going to have that resilience to be able to meet the challenge, not get crushed by it, and to get into action. So that's one thing. The second is, you know, it's my nature to be of service. I've been volunteering since I'm a little kid. It is simply my nature to be of service. So it comes very easy for me. However, I will say one of the most valuable things you can do is to be of service to others. And that helps us get out of depression because we stop thinking about I, I, me, me, my feelings, my needs, my wants. You know, when we're in a crisis like what we're in in Uvalde, And you see somebody who's got it worse than you. You forget about all those things and you're right there in service for that person. And something inside expands rather than what happens when we're thinking too much about ourselves, and that something inside contracts. So, you know, there was a woman um, that I every night, like I said, we were all there and we're still there now. And just being there of service available to the people who are mourning at the memorial. And this woman, she's now, I could call her a friend. I must have spent an hour and a half just listening to her. She lives across the street from the school. She heard the gunshots. She was there. Her children went to that school. She can't get out of her driveway more than once a day as it is now because it's a, you know, it's a criminal scene. And she worked at the hospital for 47 years. So I can't even imagine all that she's feeling. She lost her husband. She lost her mother. She lost other people in her family recently. I think maybe her sister. So lots of death, lots of grief. If anybody could crumble, you might think it's that person, right? No. That night she said to me, I want to do something, exactly what you're saying. I want to do something, what to do. And there's a lot of people cooking and, a lot, you know, food at these times happen. In Art of Living, we were right on the scene when 9-11 happened and we were making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the firefighters to feed them right away. So I just suggested lightly she go to the hospital and be with these you know, her colleagues that had been through it. And she's so wise now. She's a grandmother. She thought about it. She went the next day in spite of, you know, her own feelings. And she wrote me back and said, Patty, I feel so good. All I did was hug people. That's it. I hugged. And she had a sense of joy, a sense of expansion in spite of what we're all go- going through. So it doesn't take a big step. It could be one little step. But the minute you're of service to others, you're, you expand. Your consciousness expands. Oh, I'm going to get rid of this light for you. <laughs> there you go. I think a lot of people watching this video and me in this video with you, <laughs> Um, are probably, I I mean, one of the things I like about yoga just broadly and the art of living's offering specifically is that it's, it's not enough to just talk about, oh, it's all good. It's all spiritual, (laughs) happy, happy, happy. And then, you know, there's a mass shooting somewhere and it all collapses. And it's because at the heart of it is practice. It's, so right. having a tangible to-do list, like this is what you do in case, in case of fire, break glass, in case of personal or global crisis, do yoga or in one of its. Forms. Wow. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I stole it from a fire hydrant thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, so I'm wondering if you could give some practical advice. Cause I think almost everybody watching this, has had those moments where they're just like, screw it. Why bother? Why pray? Yeah, Why go to church? Exactly. Why do yoga? Why stand on your head? Why eat organic food? <laughs> you know, like, what's the point? What's the it, point? It's just all falling apart. What, what's yeah. the point? 
um, you have these tools in your toolbox. And I'm wondering, I, you could talk for days about the tools in your toolbox, I'm sure. But if you could give just a few small pieces of advice, a few tips, a few tricks, a few hacks, yeah. sort of punch through the depression and get to something a little more grounded, I think people would appreciate that. Absolutely, yeah. You know, the first, like I said earlier, peace begins with us. So, you know, flipping somebody off on the driving on the highway, which I know the California highways are not easy to navigate out where you are. And um, it can be that. It could be cursing someone. It could be losing your patience, right? It shows up in different ways. So the first step I would suggest to people is when you start feeling that tsunami building in yourself, a lack of patience, little tightness, just stop. Don't even open your mouth. In fact, close your mouth, close your eyes, go inside and begin to observe the rhythm of your breath. When we're stressed out, the breath, we're usually holding our breath. It's going to be choppy. It's probably pretty hot. And if you begin to observe, there's a law in nature. What's negative dissolves and what's positive expands. So just taking a few minutes to go inward and to connect to that source of happiness, of relaxation, peace, and joy, and that sense of belonging with others, by observing that rhythm, you'll see that your breath will become smoother, finer, lighter, cooler, because that source is always available to us. So it's literally as simple as that. And just a little understanding of the rhythm of our own breath can open so many dimensions. So that's one thing I would do starting today. You can also, you know, when these things are happening, do exactly what you and I were talking about. Be of service. Go do some random acts of kindness, meaning you're not even expecting a thank you. Anything random where you are being of service will, again, lift the prana, Create that sense of expansion and consciousness and bring a smile to your face. Because true service is when it's inconvenient, not convenient. And I really recommend to your listeners to attend that I Stand for Peace event on June 9th with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. You know, I am really lucky. I came to the Art of Living many years ago, almost 30 years ago now. And I was able to be trained by Sri Sri directly. And now today, the whole world is constantly running after him and even pulling his hair and pulling his clothes just to have a glimpse of him. But there is such a depth of peace in that particular being. There's many, not many, I wouldn't say many. It's rare to find someone like that. There will be others on this planet. This is the, the person who I know and um, who is my guru, my teacher. But when you go to an event where everyone's going to be meditating together, you know, Darren, even if just 1% of the population begins meditation and then we do group meditation, we really can create a shift in consciousness. I know you know that. And that will be another way that you can contribute. And then other than that, I always believe in, in being kinder and gentler in words. You know, purity in speech goes a long way. So just check your words. And maybe you take a vow, I'm not going to complain for the next 24 hours. And if that's too much, you say, I'm not going to complain for the next six hours. Because that's putting out pollution into the environment. Okay, maybe the next six minutes. <laughs> As long as there's a camera on me, I'm pretty good. When the camera goes <laughs> off, it all, all goes right out. Oh, oh, did the camera go off? No, no, no. Oh, I'm saying okay. when, when there's a camera on me, I'm well behaved. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, you oh. know, when we're in society, we have learned to do that, to look, seem very um, polite. But you can feel someone's presence when they're nights. Not so learning breathwork and meditation is definitely the way to go. Um, 
And I have an interesting story about Shreesha. You want to hear it? Yeah, I always like to hear a story um, about him. Many years ago, not many, maybe four or five years ago, I flew down to LA and interviewed um, Shri Shri. And um, I, I don't consider him my guru. I, I admire him, his work I have for many, many years. Um, and so I was excited to see him. And you never really know what to expect because people have sort of this public persona right? where they're, you know, especially gurus giving these wise talks, dispensing advice, and whatnot. And, and then you, you, you never know what people are like in private. So I met him privately and I thought, I wonder what it would be like. I wonder if he's like guru all the time or just when he's on stage. And um, he was just, first, he was incredibly sweet and loving and kind, generous. And he's like, um, you're staying for dinner. I'm like, but I have to get on a plane. Aww. He's like, you're staying for dinner. How sweet. I, I, I'm like, I really, I can't, I have to go get my son out of daycare. <laughs> <laughs> but he was just so, um, I felt like it was an Indian mother, you know, when I go to India and I, I meet women on the, on the rickshaws and, and they're like, you're coming to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that I, is so such sweet. a sweet, endearing way to mm -hmm. interact with somebody that, it, like you've said this a few times, it brings it down to the basics, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich when you're hungry, helping somebody get some sleep when they're tired. It's those basic things that, that first tier in Maslow's hierarchy. And um, yeah, so anyway, I, I just always. Well, I, I just want to add to that because the enlightened, the fully enlightened are, they're funny. He is hilarious and they're wise. And they, you know, he said when the enlightened meet, they usually talk about the price of tomatoes. They don't talk about the world condition. They're, they have that sense of belongingness with everyone. And I think that's what so many of us are looking for today is that sense of belongingness with ourself, which is what breathwork and meditation gives you connecting to the truth within. And that, and then that's just natural, a natural expression of that belongingness with one another. And if that young boy in Uvalde had a sense of belongingness, you know, he was v clearly very lonely not not right in his mind and had been bullied and who knows what he was suffering it wouldn't have happened he was just a teenager himself so i think we've got to do more with a concerted effort to bring that up in ourselves and to share it with others um i'm wondering if you could just briefly um i could talk to you for days we we <laughs> We talked the other night on the phone prepping for this interview. It was um, like so we've known each other forever, it. wasn't it? <laughs> we, we're just going to have to, you're going to have to fly out to um, Berkeley and, and we'll have to go out to out to dinner together. Or something. That sounds good to me. I'll come home for dinner. <laughs> um, but I'm wondering if you could just say briefly, since you are one of the senior teachers at The Art of Living, I think it's a great resource for a lot of people. Um, we've already mentioned the I Stand for Peace, which is on June 9th. 2022 and this video will be around forever <laughs> so if you're watching it after that it, not to worry art of living has many events like this so i'm wondering if you could um talk a little bit about this event specifically but then just broaden it for people who don't live near san jose california or who are watching this after the fact or just a, a little bit about What's the purpose of this event and what is the other types of events and classes that are offered? Okay, yeah. Um, so I Stand for Peace is a vision of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar in light of exactly what's going on and what we're talking about. And he launched it in Switzerland earlier this year, and he's on a global tour holding I Stand for Peace events throughout the U.S. From the U.S., he'll continue on to um, Central and South America, on to Africa. He had gone all throughout Europe visiting uh, Poland, where we are housing so many refugees um, from the Ukraine, victims of war. And it will go on for some time. And I'm part of an international committee founded by Sri Sri to lead efforts 
because you can't just stand for peace for one day, right? There's much that has to happen. So at the event on June 9th at 7 o'clock at the um, San Jose Civic Center, he'll lead a talk, an inspiring talk. We'll all meditate, and then there will be music, and there will be a chance to sign a pledge for peace, to share it with others, and then to also take advantage and learn more about the Art of Living programs that I've been teaching around the world and thousands of teachers lead worldwide and much like what we're doing in Uvalde right now. So there's programs for kids, there's programs for adults, corporate executives, anyone in the healthcare system, conflict resolution, conflict resolution. Sorry about that. That's life. And, um, um, just every niche of life, there is something for someone uh, so that they can have peace of mind themselves and be or and be able to share it with others. And it's the root of it is the breathing technique, the sky breath technique that we're known for that brings harmony to all seven layers of our existence and balance to body, mind and spirit. Excellent. Um you know, every time somebody has like a phone go off or something, when I like in my yoga class or when I'm doing an interview or something, I when I was younger and foolish, it used to annoy me. I used to feel sanctimonious about it, and then I decided <laughs> I'm just going to be grateful that it wasn't my phone. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, it was an alarm because I thought we were going to be done by now, but. Uh, Oh, well, these, and you know what though, Darren, these are the exactly the things I love that you brought it up that can get someone stressed and it's an alarm that went off on the phone. So what? There are bigger things going on. And so when that nervous system is settled from within, these things don't matter. Well, if I knew you were human, I never would have agreed to this interview. I know, darn it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> um. Patty Montella, um, you are amazing. I'm going to put a link to your website, your book, Becoming Unshakable, The Art of Living. I will also put a link to the event on June 9th, 2022 in San Jose, California. For those of you who can make it, I highly recommend it. If you can't make that, there are other events, I'm sure, in your area and around the world. So check out the Art of Living website for the most up-to-date stuff that's going on. I'll also put information um, and links to my website and all of the different things I'm doing, including the free meditation course that I'm offering online. So, Patty, you're awesome, and I really appreciate you, and I'm so, so grateful. You know, I've been so depressed for the past two weeks. Um, just there's something about this particular um, shooting in Uvalde that was just, it just was too much. My heart yeah. couldn't handle it. Yeah. And um, a lot of people are saying really that. Help me feel more grounded and remind me of why I do the work I do and why, you know, and the, just the simple act of teaching people how to meditate, how to breathe, how to be in their body, how to be present to each other is such a gift. And I'm just grateful to you and everyone at the Art of Living for helping further that cause. Oh, Darren, thank you. And you know, it's really wonderful we're doing this because when we make the message of nonviolence louder than the, than the sound and the noise of violence, we can have a divine society. So there's many more people who feel this way and want to lift one another. And I hope we were able to do that today just a little bit for anyone listening. Thank you so much. Um, I hope people will reach out to you. I'll definitely like, you're just such an amazing person and read her book. It's so good. Thank you. <laughs> um, Patty, have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you um, when you come to Berkeley for that dinner. <laughs> I'm going to take you up on it. <laughs> okay.